bro, just just why? Why? Why are you biting kids, bro? And here's the thing. Like, I get like, you know, some people like do that with, with a baby. They're like, mar, 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 you know, just playfully. Mar, 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 mar. <laughs> I don't ever want to do that noise again. Mar, 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 mar. But it's it's a playful thing. I get that. But dude, Joe, you know, you know the media is gonna use it to call you a creep. So, so why why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Why are you why are you biting kids, man? Alvin. I don't want to experience any of that. Zero percent of that would I like to experience. Zero. Zero percent of it. Oh, look. Oh, there. Now I did it. Now, now I did it. The comments are going to go fucking nuts because I just accidentally did the Illuminati symbol. God damn it. It's not easy being a conspiracy theory YouTuber. <laughs> What's the scariest story you've ever heard? This is Rhoda Derry, but before she looked like this, she looked like this. As you can tell, she was an incredibly beautiful woman. Rhoda was born on October 10th of 1842, her seven older siblings and her parents in Indiana. It is believed that her family was considerably wealthy. As Rhoda grew older, she fell in love with the boy next door. They were farmers that farmed right next to them, and she fell in love with this boy. His name was Charles, but Charles's pa parents did not agree with this relationship. The reason they didn't agree with this relationship was because it had been rumored that uh, Rhoda's family was involved in witchcraft. This was a rumor that had plagued the family. Uh, they said that her grandmother was a witch, and so uh, Charles's mother did not want him to marry Rhoda. It got to the point where Charles's mother finally approached Rhoda and said that if they went ahead with the marriage, that she would curse Rhoda. Suddenly, Rhoda became inconsolable, I guess you could say, and she even started having episodes of being pushed against a wall with, by an unseen force. This is according to records, of course. But she also grew violent and had a violent temper. It got to the point where her parents would take her to a mental health facility, but they would deem her uncurable and send her back to her parents. Rhoda would then go on to go to another mental health facility, and it was known to not treat its patients humanely there. Rhoda began exhibiting violent behavior, and she even would scratch out her own eyes and punch all of her own teeth out. She was also kept in a wooden box and she would lay in there naked. It is said that it would fill up with her own fecal matter and mice would lay nests around her, but she was constantly moving so she always had bruises all over her body. And since Rhoda wasn't walking, she would eventually lose the ability to walk and she wouldn't be able to use her legs so she would just crawl around. Now, there was one article that said in 1906, she had a severe epileptic attack that caused her to burst out in violence and the uh, people at the hospital or the nurses were just sick of it and they slit her throat. 
It is said that a couple years later, nurses would admit to doing this, but there's also articles that say that she was finally taken care of by a different doctor who believed in treating his patients humanely. And that she would eventually get to a point where she was given a bath daily and would lay in a real bed. But people who visit Rhoda's grave say that they can feel someone tugging at their legs and maybe Rhoda is still there. Either way, this is a tragic tale and, and it is a reminder to take care of your mental health and to treat everyone with kindness and respect. What are your thoughts on this? What do I think? Nope. Absolutely not. It kind of sounds like she just had a psychological break though. Like she just like lost her shit one day, right? It could have been, I don't know if she came from a wealthy family. You know, she could have been treated poorly, didn't get the attention she wanted, dyed her hair purple, started calling herself trans. You know, that old story. Uh, but <laughs> oh, I'm going to get some hate comments for that one. But yeah, it sounds like maybe she was schizophrenic or just had a psychological break and then maybe had like a seizure, made her immobile, in which case it's just kind of like compiling like issues, mental and physical. If it's even true. But uh, that's very sad. All of that is very sad. And I hope that the latter is what happened. And she actually found a doctor that got help because the whole after, you know, a terrible life in a terrible hospital with terrible doctors and terrible nurses treating you terribly does not sound like the ideal way to spend the last days here on Earth. the most baffling. Immediately after arriving to the second floor, its door, for some reason, begins to open and close while staying on the same floor. But even stranger is that a faint voice is heard inside the elevator. Son of a bitch. Fucking hate jump scares. I fucking hate jump scares! Stupid sh <laughs> I hate it so much. I hate it so much. So hell is just a ditty party. There's <laughs> a bunch of there's a bunch of people laying on top of each other, slimy and lubed up, screaming. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, it's, a, it's a ditty party. <laughs> Guys, this is a terrifying video from the dark web. Uh, it shows what I'll call Yahtzees from World War II in 1944 attempting to use some sort of, I don't even know how to describe it, dark power, otherworldly power, um, something along those lines. Whatever it is, it's terrifying. Uh, 1944, they lost the war, 1945, so you tell me what you think. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. So obviously, I don't know if that video was real or not. Who knows? Looked kind of not real. But then again, you know, who's to say? Who am I to judge? I will say, though, I know the so-called Yahtzees, as this gentleman so eloquently put it, to appease the YouTube gods that Gandalf Bitler, we'll just call him, um, <laughs> of the Yahtzee, 
<laughs> regime <laughs> was like adamant about finding ancient artifacts, Spirit Destiny, Art of the Covenant, all that stuff. Like he wanted all of it. He wanted to find Atlantis. He wanted to find the secrets to the ancient Egyptian temples. Like he was super into it. It wouldn't be surprising to me if they somehow came across that stuff because after the war ended, America took all those scientists and all those doctors from the Yahtzees and brought them over here and basically let them let their war crimes go if they basically agreed to help us develop our technology based off of what technology they had. And I think the only way that that would make sense for us to even give a shit about what technology they had, seeing as we had superior technology... You would think because we won the war that they had access to ancient things, ancient knowledge, maybe reverse engineered ships and shuttles and things like that, that we wanted to learn from them. And then our, our technology, our, uh, our military uh, technology just went woo through the roof after that. So I don't know if this video was real, but uh, I would not be surprised if something similar happened. Anne's Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Destination Fear. Led by paranormal aficionado Dakota Layden, the team faces several distressing situations at the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Though not a singular moment, the crew stumbles into a few consecutive ones that keep even the most iron-willed viewer on their toes. The tension builds as Tanner and Dakota survey each floor. Eventually, they're startled by the unmistakable sound of a door creaking to a close. Dude, that was like a high, like, squeak of, like, a door or something. Following the sound, Tanner spots a cold mass on his thermal camera, alerting the pair that they're not alone. What was that? What? What? Dude, I just saw a black mass. A black mass? Dude, it was like, I don't even know. It was just like a black thermal. On your thermal on your night vision? On my thermal. On the thermal. That means it's freezing cold. What's worse, Alex gets a disturbing call from Tanner. Except Tanner doesn't have his phone. What? Tanner? What is that? The team scrambles to find the prank caller to no avail, leaving viewers tantalized and terrified about what lurks in the asylum's halls. Jeez, man. Even the asylums are trans these days. <laughs> trans Lucretia. Moon Asylum. He didn't even have his phone. He saw a cold mass on the thermal. I'm kind of out of it today, man. I was I was up all night watching the election. I'm so tired. I'm drinking a uh, energy drink here to <laughs> make it through this video. Looks like piss. Looks like I'm drinking piss. Oh, I've been really dehydrated lately, so my piss is a lot more yellow <laughs> than this right now. FYI. TMI. The Trans Jewish Student Asylum. This is Annalise Mitchell. A real recording from her exorcism will be played at the end, so I'm just giving you a warning right now. Annalise lived in Germany with her parents, Anna and Joseph, and they were extremely religious. Anna had extreme religious practices like making her children sleep on the hardwood floor in the winter. It was her belief that others couldn't atone for their own sins, so therefore her children had to suffer on their behalf. Then, in 1968, when Annalise turned 16, she began to have her first incidents. Annalise would wake up in the middle of the night with a heavy pressure on her chest and she couldn't breathe. She also couldn't move and this incident would completely terrify her. Anna's parents would take her to the doctor where she was diagnosed with temporal lobe epilepsy. A few years later, Annalise would get extremely sick with pneumonia and tuberculosis. Because of this, she had to spend weeks isolated in a sanatorium. This was a type of medical facility used before the discovery of antibiotics. When Anna got back from the sanatorium, her parents noticed that her personality had completely changed. Anna began to hear voices that would tell her she was damned to rotten hell, she would see demonic faces everywhere, and she developed an aversion to religious objects. She especially disliked crucifixes and pictures of Jesus, and she would not look at them. During this time, she kept going to the doctor and they would give her every medication under the sun, which would quiet down the symptoms, but they would never fully go away. This is when people started to think that she was possessed. As things continued to worsen, the family finally got a priest to perform an exorcism. And at this time, her symptoms were terrible. Anna would throw herself onto her knees 400 times a day into a praying position. She would do this until she broke both of her kneecaps and ripped her tendons. She began eating the heads of birds, eating spiders, drinking her urine, and speaking in Latin to curse God. 
Latin is apparently the native tongue of all demons. Wrens would perform a total of 67 exorcisms, each of them lasting from 1 to 4 hours. It was here that he learned that there are six demons possessing her. One of these demons claimed to be Lucifer himself. Now, quick warning, I've compiled the most insane clips from the exorcism, and here it is. Holy shit. The power of Christ compels you. I mean, to be completely honest, <clears throat> it sounds like she had a really shitty childhood with like overly religious parents. I mean, they made her sleep on the hardwood floor and basically punished her because other people in the world sinned. And honestly, if I was to grow up in that environment, I would probably have an aversion to religious symbolism as well. I mean, I went to some pretty shitty churches when I was young. Like, I wasn't allowed to trick or treat or anything. My family was pretty religious for a long time. And I completely despised the idea of religion for a very long time. Uh, just because it was just my only experience was just terrible people, right? Just like not doing it right, just doing it incorrectly. You know, the opposite of what I thought Christianity should have been and still do. So to have someone like this extreme, her parents, I could see that, you know, just the abuse and the forced punishment um, just for existing, like probably creating some psychological issues and then having a psychotic break and then ha having a aneurysm or seizures or whatever or being epileptic or causing more brain damage and just like all encompassing issues that are just basically creating a bunch of mental health issues and, and physical health issues, neurological disorders that would lead to someone acting out like this completely. And, and maybe, who, who knows, maybe all of that makes it easier to be possessed. Maybe that she actually was possessed um, because she was vulnerable in those, in those stages of, you know, poor and deteriorating mental and physical health. Or maybe she just had mental disorders, you know, neurological disorders caused by being abused and manipulated into, you know, feeling inferior just for being alive in that household, right? Like you're you're born into sin, so you are worthless. I don't know, man. I'm I'm not very religious anymore by any means. I'm definitely not against religion, but I will say that that is not a way to go about doing it. I, I feel like religion should teach you love and compassion and patience and understanding and accountability, and not be some like fear mongering like you're going to hell just because you exist. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that some people take teachings with good intentions and turn them into something that is just like completely self-serving and detrimental to the, the mental well-being of themselves or the kids or, or whoever it comes in contact with. Just, I don't know. I don't know. Hate comments below. Go ahead. Send them. Give me the hate comments. That's right. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of, of that kind of uh, religious teachings. So go ahead. Light it up. <laughs> Light it up. <laughs> But that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. It has been super awesome being back on YouTube with you guys. And I don't know why I'm beating the shit out of my 
my desk while I'm emphasizing uh, what I'm saying here. But Lucid Crew, you guys have been amazing. All my new subscribers that have been pouring in over the past couple months, you guys are incredible as well. Thank you for the support. There's a link for merchandise down below in the description. There's also my SoundCloud where you can listen to my original songs and some DJ mixes that I do. You can also follow me on social media, my Instagram. I just shit post a lot of offensive memes and my stories and post uh, stuff about my life on there. And um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, <laughs> subscribe if you have not already. Like the video, share it, all that good stuff. Comment if you had fun. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.